And I want to thank everybody for coming out. I just want to make a few brief comments about the results Saturday night and then make a couple of announcements on staffing changes. Obviously, a great night on Saturday night. We were thrilled with the historic victory. 66% of the vote, uh, highest margin since we've gone to an open primary. We won all 64 parishes. Again, I want to thank the voters of Louisiana. It was truly humbling to get this mandate, to get this opportunity to serve the people of Louisiana for another four years. Also, a great night for our conservative candidates running across the state, both uh, in Bessie elections as well in the legislature. You look at the candidates that we endorsed of the statewide legislative and Bessie races, we won 87 races in which we endorsed. That includes, especially important to us, three candidates in Bessie races. We lost uh, and we, we endorsed and lost in eight races. So of the endorsements we made, 87 candidates won. That includes some that were elected unopposed, and then we lost in eight of those elections. What that means, the Victory Fund spent over a million dollars, sent out over one and a half million pieces of mail, made nearly two million phone calls. Nearly half a million dollars of that was spent on TV ads in the Bessie races. Our campaign also, in addition to that, contributed more than $272,000 to candidates for House, Senate, and Bessie races. We had said all along, our top priority were, well, our top priority in this election, in addition to our own re-election, was to elect reform-minded candidates to the Bessie board. That's why we were especially thrilled with our victories in the Bessie races. Our wins there showed that Louisianians are fed up with failing schools. They want to see more reform in, in the classrooms. Certainly happy. I want to congratulate Jim Garvey for returning to Bessie. We had two great wins in Lafayette and Monroe areas where we had two challengers, Holly and Jay, both beat uh, incumbent Bessie members. I think since a strong message, strong message that voters want change, they want reform, they want accountability in our schools. Certainly I'm disappointed that Glennie won't be returning to Bessie. She's been a great friend, a great public servant, has given many, many years of service to the state, and I want to thank her for her service. Strong night. It was a strong night overall, but our work's not done yet. We have another big Bessie race, obviously, in the runoff right here in Baton Rouge. In the runoffs, Bessie continues to be our priority, just like it was in, in this past election. So we're going to be focused on Chaz's race. It's critical we get more reformers elected to Bessie. Bottom line is, we must give more choices to parents whose children are trapped in failing schools. We must reward teacher excellence by building on our value-added program. We must hold schools accountable when they fail to educate our children, even basic grade-level standards. We must, we must not accept anything short of great educational choices for every student in Louisiana. That's what's at stake in this runoff election. I want to make a couple of staffing uh, announcements. I'll be happy to take questions. Um, I want, uh, if, if Timmy and Stephen will come up here, I want to thank Timmy Teeple for his many years of service to me in a variety of capacities. Uh, Timmy and I have been friends for a number of years. As many of you know, he served as my campaign manager in 2004 when I first ran for Congress. He then, after that successful election, served as my chief of staff uh, during both my terms in Congress, served as my campaign manager four years ago, uh, then has served as my chief of staff since that time, since we won office for the first time as governor four years ago. He did not serve as campaign manager this last time, which is why we did so much better than we did four years ago. Uh, should have hired Matt four years ago was the, my takeaway. I am uh, honored by his friendship, by his service to the people of Louisiana. He's done a great job for, for not only our administration, but for the people of Louisiana. He has served uh, tirelessly for a number of years now. I'm pleased to announce that he will now be leaving the administration effective today. Timmy Teeple will be a partner in the D.C.-based political consulting firm called On Message Inc. He will be living here in Baton Rouge. He'll be there. He'll be in charge of the Baton Rouge office, but he will be a, a partner in the, in the political consulting firm. He d that doesn't mean he's leaving either Louisiana for, and I know there are a lot of people disappointed when I make that announcement, but uh, he's also not leaving our team as well. On Message Inc., for those of you that don't know, uh, has basically, in, under different names, it wasn't formed eight years ago, but they have uh, basically been my consultant. They have worked with me on every single election uh, that I've ever been involved in, starting from my very first race for governor back in 2003. Now, again, they had a different name in 2003, but the principals have been involved in every single campaign I've ever run in. So we're not saying goodbye to Timmy. He will continue to be involved. Uh, he'll just be involved on the political side. He'll be involved as a political consultant, be working uh, for a variety of, of clients, I'm sure, across the country. Taking his place, I'm pleased that Stephen Wagesback will uh, be effective today, will be my chief of staff. He'll be the chief of staff 
uh, in our second term as well. Stephen has done a phenomenal job, as many of you know. He's had a variety of titles in the administration. He has served as executive counsel, he's served as deputy chief of staff. He served as chief of staff a couple of other times when Timmy has wandered away uh, to work on different campaigns and taken leaves. Uh, he has done a great job. Stephen has tremendous experience uh, both here in Baton Rouge but also in Washington, D.C. I was honored when he came down uh, in my last gubernatorial campaign to be policy director uh, to, and he worked extremely hard in that campaign and stayed on afterwards again to work as, first as deputy chief of staff before taking the role of executive counsel. Honored to have him as my chief of staff. He's going to do a phenomenal job. I know he'll make sure there's a not only a seamless transition but that we continue to be proactive and hit the ground running with this second term. The second staffing announcement I, I want to announce today, and if Kyle and Melissa, if you'll come up here. Melissa Sellers has been a, a great, great friend. Many of you know that she came down to work, came back to Louisiana to work uh, on my last gubernatorial campaign. She's been with us for over four and a half years. She has served in a number of capacities, served as uh, press secretary as well as communications director. Melissa has done a phenomenal job for us, and, and we are pleased to announce that effective December 1st, She'll be leaving the administration. She'll be going back to school. She's going to seminary. Uh, she'll be studying at the Dallas Theological Seminary over there in the state of Texas to the west of us. It's kind of hard to get mad at somebody when they're leaving you for God, so we didn't try to, <laughs> didn't try to talk her out of it. We are pleased uh, that she has done, not only given so many years of service to uh, our administration and two different campaigns, but also the people of Louisiana. And we're thrilled and honored for her service. Wish her well in her new endeavors and her new studies. Uh, taking her place as communications director will be Kyle Plotkin. Kyle, as you, many of you know, has been uh, our deputy press secretary and then our, came down and, and served as our press secretary. Um, why did, did, were you actually deputy press secretary? No, no came down uh, to be press secretary. I'm sorry. Came, 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 down, <laughs> came down as our press secretary, um, joined us shortly uh, at, after the beginning of our, uh, this current term. Uh, he has done a great, great job for us. Thrilled to be announcing that Kyle will be taking Melissa's place. We're promoting Kyle to be our communications director. And again, that will be effective December 1st. Uh, again, we'll ensure a seamless transition. I'm sure there are going to be a number of other uh, personnel changes uh, that we will be uh, announcing in the days and weeks ahead. We're going to obviously talk to folks within the administration and, and determine uh, who will be staying and determine uh, what new additions we'll be making to our team. But I did want to announce today these two transitions. And, and again, I, I want to wish Timmy and Melissa well as they embark on these new journeys in their lives. But I also want to congratulate Stephen and Kyle. They're going to do a great job not only for the administration, but for the state. We're thrilled that they'll be taking on these new responsibilities, and I think that is great for our team, and I think it's great for the state of Louisiana. I'll be, now it's kind of awkward since I got Melissa and Kyle up here, but I'll be happy to take your question. Our top priority, and we'd, we've said this for a while, our top priority is going to be K-12 education reform. We have made great progress as a state. We've got a lot more work to do. You look in the last four years, our retention graduation rates have gone up. The, the reading, math, other scores uh, for ch our children have gone up. The numbers of kids in failing schools, number of failing schools has gone down, and that's all great. But the reality is we have a lot more work to do. And we certainly, we made some progress with measures like the value added assessment bill that links teacher performance and measures what's going on in individual classrooms. We need to continue to push and build on that law to reward great teachers. We also need to give parents more information. The letter grade bill empowers parents to know how their students are doing. We want to make sure that we give parents more information, more choices so their children can get a great education. And finally, we want to give more choices, especially to parents of kids trapped in failing schools. Our overarching goal will continue to be the same, which is economic development, continue to create more good paying jobs so our, our people don't have to leave Louisiana. Friday night, uh, Friday, not Friday night, Friday, some good economic uh, data came out. Our unemployment rate fell yet again. Third best state in terms of job creation uh, uh, based on the numbers that came out Friday. But we still have more work to do to create more jobs. Education reform is a key component of that. And you look back to what we did in the first term, from cutting taxes to ethics reform to workforce training, it was all built uh, around economic development. 70% of the companies that want to move here or expand here tell us one of their top two concerns is finding a skilled worker. So it is important, and one of the things I say to parents, you should care about this, whether you care about this because you've got children in school today, but even if your children have grown up, you need to care about this whether it's because you care about your own children, whether you care about the future economic development of our state, or whether you just worry about the overall quality of life. All of the studies have shown that as we improve education, that will decrease poverty, it will improve healthcare outcomes, decrease crime rates, 
This is absolutely critical for us to continue to move our state forward. So K-12 education will be our, our, our priority, especially as we enter this first year of the second term. Our overarching goal remains the same in the second term, which is economic development, creating more jobs, continuing to outperform the southern and the national economies. We've not made a decision whether we're getting involved in the other races. We absolutely will be helping Chaz. That's our top priority in this next set of elections. We've got some other candidates we've supported as well, but Bessie was our priority in the first round of elections and continue to be our priority in the runoff as well. I, I absolutely do think it's a, I think it's a mandate when we won with a, a record margin compared to previous open primary elections. I do think it's a mandate when we win in all 64 parishes. You know, I, the reality is I, I think people are generally pleased with the direction the state's going, uh, in, in which the state's going. The reality is that we have continued, our unemployment rate continues to be below the national and southern averages. We are outperforming uh, the rest of the country economically. We are impacted by the national recession, but again, I think overall people are pleased. I, I had a number of voters come tell me they may not agree with every, th every single decision, but overall they're pleased with the direction of the state. I had people tell me that, by the way, on Saturday, I'm watching my kids play, one of my kids play football, and I had parents come tell me there, now, Governor, I don't agree with this or that, but I'm still voting for you today. So, uh, you know, even up until Election Day, people are coming up and, and telling me, that, yeah, they're pleased with the overall direction of the state. You know, we were thrilled that when Pilgrim's Pride left, we were able to bring back Foster Farms to save over a thousand jobs there. We were thrilled we were able to bring in ConAgra to process sweet potatoes and add value to the, the crops grown by our farmers in Northeast Louisiana. Thrilled we were able to create other opportunities to add value to the crops grown here or, or transported through our state. For example, Folgers expanded their coffee roasting facility in eastern New Orleans, in New Orleans East, and you also saw it in southwest Louisiana. You saw with Zagus USA doing their, their cotton facility there. We're going to continue to work hard to create economic opportunities for not only our farmers, but to add value to the products they grow. That creates better paying jobs in our state, but it also creates more demand for the commodities, the crops grown by our farmers, gives them more markets in which they can sell their products. I think that is the key. That is the key to helping our agricultural based economy. A very important economy, a very important part of our economy, as you know, responsible for billions of dollars in our GDP, responsible for thousands of jobs. So it is something we're going to continue to focus on working with Commissioner Strain. Congratulations. Congratulate him on his re-election. Obviously, we endorsed Mike. We think he's done a great job. We're going to work in partnership with him to continue to bring those value-added processors to help our farmers continue to do well right here in Louisiana. We will be entering into a wager. We haven't uh, yet decided on, on the specifics, but uh, Robert Bentley is a very nice man, a very good friend, a great governor uh, over in, in Alabama, but we absolutely are expecting to beat them and, and beat them badly. Uh, we expect to be rude guests uh, when they invite us to, uh, two weeks from now to come play football over there. So uh, we will be doing a, a friendly wager. I will tell you this about the Florida wager. Rick Scott did send the, the key lime pie that he had promised, and as promised, I sent half of it to Coach Miles. I, we had gone to the game. We'd gone uh, to the field before, and I introduced Governor Scott to, to Coach Miles, and I told Coach, I said, look, he's sending us a pie, and you know, I said, I don't want to get you in trouble, but if you win this game, half that pie is yours. I said, I don't know if that's allowed under the rules, but I'm going to send you half the pie. And he said, that, that's a deal. When I told my little girl, because the governor came here, Governor Scott came here before we went to the game together, my little nine-year-old girl heard that we were betting pies. We bet them some seafood, and we were sending them some seafood. We're gracious winners. We are going to send them uh, some seafood, even though we won the, the bet. And we're going to be wagering. I, we will likely be offering uh, Governor Bentley Louisiana seafood as our end uh, of the wager, by the way. But when my little girl met the governor of Florida, instead of saying we, we look forward to getting the pie, she was told him she was disappointed in the bet. And he asked her, he said, well, what did you want? You know, what do you want instead of a pie? She said, I want a trip to Disney World. I want to go meet Mickey Mouse. So I, I told her that that wasn't the governor of Florida's responsibility. He was not going to be sending her to did Disney World. Well, we were going to sit down and talk to each secretary one at a time to determine their uh, plans, and we'll be visiting with them. The reality is that we try to recruit the best hardest working, smartest people to come work for us, uh, to make their contributions here in Louisiana. As you know, we already had some turnover in the first term. Uh, we know that our, our sec many of our secretaries are, are, are certainly able to earn a lot more money and have other opportunities in the private sector, but we're going we're gonna, to, Stephen and I are going to sit down and talk to each of the secretaries, and not just the secretaries, other, other senior officials within the administration. We hadn't done that, wanted to win the election first before we asked people about their, their plans for a second term. Uh, despite uh, what many of y'all did, we didn't call the election until actually the votes had, that had been cast until 8 p.m. So we hadn't actually uh, talked talked to the, the officials, cabinet officials yet. So we haven't started those conversations, but we will uh, start those conversations this week. Thank you guys very much.